Okay, to walk you through this, I'm gonna go through a sample client. His name is Jim Halper, and he works at Dunder Mifflin in Scranton, PA. One of the many things that makes tax filing so heinous is you never really quite know what to expect. Some years, you get a nice refund. Other years, you unexpectedly have to write a big check. I'm here to help you avoid that. In the ideal world, we don't pay taxes at all. But the next best thing is to pay taxes evenly throughout the year so that when you go to file your taxes, you're as close to zero as possible. So I've created this worksheet to help you with that. And you can download below absolutely free. Just ask for a like if you find this helpful. Okay, quick disclaimer, while I am a CPA, please do not consider this tax advice. This is simply a resource that I created to help you figure out whether or not your withholding is on the right track. But you'll need to engage a tax advisor for your specific situation. Okay, to walk you through this, I'm gonna go through a sample client. His name is Jim Halper, and he works at Dunder Mifflin in Scranton, PA. And we have his pay stub here, which is gonna be the source of a lot of the information that we need. Let's just start at the main input tab. So we need to know the tax filing status. So Jim is married, so we'll select married filing joint. Tax year we're doing this for is 2024. And then we need to get some information on the number of pay periods. So if you consistently get paid every other week, you likely have 26 pay periods per year. There are two months where you get three paychecks. But if your employer pays you twice a month, every month, you're gonna have 24 pay periods per year. This is important for us to know because we're gonna calculate how many pay periods we have left, which is gonna help us make adjustments if needed. Dunner Mifflin pays twice a month, so there's 24 pay periods per year. And then the pay stub that we have for Jim is as of October 15th, and this is the pay period end date. So this is the, the date uh, for which he is paid through. And then we have the estimated paychecks that we have left in the year. Now this is a formula. If you think this is wrong based on your employer, they have odd weeks or something like that, then uh, just go ahead and overwrite that. Another thing we need to decide is how do we want to project the rest of the year? Do we want to just annualize his year-to-date earnings or do we want to manually project? So you'll have an option here. Number one is annualize. That'll just take your last pay stub and it'll use that to project earnings and withholdings for the remainder of the year. If you select manual, that will give you the option to manually input your income and withholdings for the rest of the year. So this would be good for um, if you get like a year end bonus or if you have commission that is larger in the fourth quarter, that's when you would want to use uh, the manual option. I'm gonna select the annualized option for now. Okay, and then in terms of compensation, Jim has a salary and commission, no restricted stock units, Dunner Mifflin is not that generous and uh, no bonus. And then we'll assume Pam is uh, taking some time off work and uh, that she just is selling art on the side. And um, so right here we have business income checked. I uh, will assume no rental income. Just a side note on this, if you have business income or rental income, I, I highly suggest working with a CPA. There are a lot of surprises that can come with that, especially if you're not used to making estimated tax payments. And this is not intended for those purposes. It is some income that people have, even if it's just a little, so I wanted to include it. All right, now we're gonna go over to the pay stub tab, and this is where we're actually gonna enter data from the pay stub. So under this green box here, we're gonna enter the uh, current period earnings and withholdings and deductions. So just for the past two weeks. So salary, commission, I've got that entered here and then federal, state, local taxes, social security, and Medicare. Uh, now, it's important to remember that this whole analysis is just for federal taxes. State and local can be really unique, so we're just looking at federal taxes. But I did wanna put the tax deductions here just for the sake of completeness. And then he has some deductions for employee benefits, so I've, I've plugged those in here, and then he's doing a Roth 401k contribution, so I've plugged that in there as well. Again, this is just for the current period. And then once you go under the orange box, we're gonna enter all the year-to-date numbers. Now, every paycheck that I've ever seen has a current period and year-to-date numbers. Um, this is really important for us to project out for the entire year. So now we're gonna wanna enter year-to-date amounts. Another important thing to, to note here is that all deductions should be entered in negative numbers. Okay, and then under this red here is where we're actually gonna go ahead and annualize the income. So we're gonna take the year-to-date the based on the number of paychecks that we expect for the rest of the year, uh, projecting out the rest of the year. And then this final column is the total income and withholdings and payroll deductions that we expect for the entire year of 2024. So this box down here, the taxable wages, that's essentially what we would expect to be in box one of form W-2 uh, when he gets that in January. And that's what we're gonna use when we project our taxes. We're also gonna use this uh, federal tax payment here of 16,100. That is what we expect based on how the employer has been withholding the total amount of federal taxes that will have been withheld for him at the end of 2024. Okay, we don't have any pay stubs for Pam at this point, but she does have some business income 
Um, so I put that here. Again, if you have business or rental income, things can get tricky. So I would caution against um, using this solely or completely DIYing your taxes in those situations. But for the purpose of this example, I've included a little bit of business income. Okay, and then we can go to the income summary tab that pulls it all together. And this is what we're gonna use to input into the income tax calculator, which is the most important step. So I'm using the Tax Act income tax calculator. Uh, it's actually pretty good. It's not overly simple, but it's not overly complicated. When I'm doing this for clients, I'm obviously using like a professional tax planning software, but I wanted to provide something that was useful and free. So that's what we're going to use here. So it's all pretty self-explanatory. Plug in the tax year, uh, Jim's date of birth, which I'm sure is not accurate. Did not use Tax Act to complete last year's return. They are married. They are filing joint. Uh, I also have the spouse's birth date there as well. They cannot be claimed as a dependent. Um, and they do have a dependent, one child. Uh, what was her name again? Pee Pee? Pee -pa. All right, so we move on to the next tab. Now we're actually gonna enter the income. So we'll take the taxpayer wages from our worksheet that we've accumulated. This is what we expect the total 2024 income to be. No W-2 income for Pam, so we'll leave that blank, but she did have some business income. So we've plugged that in of 8,965. And then we wanna enter the federal taxes withheld and estimated tax payments. Jim and Pam have not made any estimated tax payments. All federal tax payments have gone through his employer. And that amount is 16,100. And then if you had other sources of income, like interest income or capital gains, uh, you'll wanna enter that here as well. For the purposes of this, I'm just leaving that blank. And then you wanna complete the deductions as well, like mortgage interest, state and local taxes paid. For the purposes of this example, I'm just assuming that they're gonna take the standard deduction. Okay, do you pay for any childcare expenses? Um, we're gonna say no, assuming that Pam and Helene got that under control. I know energy saving improvements, no education expenses at this point. And then we actually get to the income tax calculation or our estimated income tax calculation. So estimated taxable income of 128,209. The estimated federal tax on that is 18,302. We expect $2,000 in child tax credit and $1,267 in self-employment taxes on Pam's business income. Now they've already paid 16,100 in federal tax payments through Jim's paychecks. So that leaves us with $1,479 that they would owe in federal taxes when they go to file their tax return in April or the estimated amount, I should say. So we're gonna copy that and go back to our worksheet, back to the income summary tab and plug that into the total balance due section. Plug in the current date. And now we wanna figure out how do we make up for the shortfall so we don't have to write that big check in April. Three ways we can do this. Number one is modify Jim's tax withholdings through his employer to increase the federal taxes that are taken out each pay period. So we expect five paychecks through now and the end of the year. And so if we want to completely make up the estimated balance due, he would need to have an additional $295.80 withheld each paycheck between now and the end of the year. And he could do that by just entering that amount directly on line 4C of form W-4, which would be provided by his employer. Second option would be to make monthly estimated tax payments between now and the end of the year. You can do that online. Here's a link to the IRS online account where you can do that. Since there's only three months left in the year, they would need to make monthly payments of $493 if they wanted that obligation completely satisfied by December. Now, if that's too big of a monthly payment and they can't afford that from a cash flow perspective, we can move on to option three, which would be making estimated tax payments between now and April. So that would spread out the payments over six months instead of three, and there would be monthly payments of $246.50. Now, since you're spreading out those payments more through April, you would likely owe a little more in interest and penalties, but with their situation, it'd be very minimal, if anything. This is something I suggest doing a few times a year. The later in the year that you push this off, the less time you have to tweak some of your federal tax withholdings if you're not on track. All right, well, that's it. Like I said, you can get this worksheet below. Hope you find it useful. Best of luck.